Hey, it's Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and I'm assuming you clicked on this video because maybe you've been told or you think you have one leg that's longer or shorter than the other and I'm going to break down what this actually means, kind of flip it on its head a little bit and then give you something you can do to find the root cause because there is one thing above all that I've seen in my private practice working with people in pain the last 10 years or people with mobility issues um, that tends to be the cause of this whole one leg longer than the other phenomenon. So first of all, there's actually a really big difference between um, measuring your legs if you're standing versus lying down. Um, when you're standing, your body has no choice but to create some kind of compensation so both your feet are on the floor, right? You're not going to be walking around or standing around, I should say, with one foot hanging off the ground, hovering like a quarter of an inch off the ground, right? Um, so your body's going to find a way to get both feet on the ground. Uh, and so if somebody's looking at you while you're standing and then kind of assessing and, um, and measuring things like your hips, and then telling you, well, one leg's longer than the other. Um, if they were to put you on the floor, it would actually end up most likely the opposite while you're lying down, which I think is really interesting. Um, but that's because your body doesn't have to work so hard now to touch the ground. So when you're standing, the leg that actually seems longer, or put another way, um, one hip might appear higher. So for example, um, I know I'm wearing black, so it might be hard to see, but if I like hike one hip up like that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about an anterior pelvic tilt where one of your hips in front is tilted forward. That's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about basically one hip hiked up higher than the other. Um, and if you're looking in the mirror at yourself, you want to find your hip bones. If you're standing, whatever hip appears hiked up or a little higher is actually going to be, um, if you're lying down, the one that appears shorter, um, like it'll appear like the short leg if you're lying down. So I know a lot of chiropractors kind of do an assessment this way, but some of them will test you kind of visually standing, like get their thumbs in there and kind of look at you. Um, and then some like to put you on a table and measure you that way with your legs, right? And they'll kind of put your heels together and see which leg is shorter than the other. Um, so the culprit usually, um, and I'll tie this back around so it makes sense, is going to be your inner thigh or your adductor fascia. And when your adductor fascia on one leg starts to restrict and tighten more so than the other leg, it'll pull that hip a little higher when you're standing, your foot still reaches the ground. And so that leg when you're standing will appear higher or taller, longer. Um, but if you were to lie down that side, so for instance, my let's say my right side was appearing to be hiked up, AKA longer when I'm standing, um, if I were to lie down and someone would measure my feet by putting my heels together, uh, that leg would actually appear shorter when I'm lying down. And the reason is that adductor fascia is actually shortened um, and that's actually causing that hip hike. You're just able to reach the ground because your body knows how to compensate. So a really great way to test out my theory is going to be to use a basketball. You could use a medicine ball, but basketball is my favorite tool for this and test your adductor fascia left to right to see which one feels tighter, ten more tender, more achy, more sore when you get on it versus the other one. And then to balance yourself out, you want to take care of releasing that tight side more um, than the other side. When they're even, you would then do both equally if you want to keep going towards optimization, of course. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate on my left leg I'm not going to show you the right because it'll be exactly the same. You just reverse it. Um, but you're going to come pretty much on your side uh, and then like hip stacked ish. And then you'll start maybe low to your knee in kind of that VMO fascia area. And you can start real simply by just placing your leg weight. Notice the sensations that arise. Is it achy? Is it sore? Is it tender? Um, and then you can stabilize the ball with your hand and start to move your leg. So you've got slow, 
extension flexion. So I'm extending right now through some pretty sore fascia, if I do say so right there on me. Um, all the way back, there was a tiny little, tiny clunk, very subtle, um, but I clearly have something to release right here. Uh, so that's one option. And then you have rolling back and forth. So if you notice, my leg is rolling, not my hips. Um, then you want to move pretty slow. And then you could go up a little bit, try the same thing, just a slow bend, and then a straighten. And now I can tell you what causes most people's um, adductor fascia to create that uh, hike in the hip where one leg appears higher um, is usually that high adductor fascia um, near the pelvis. So you want to kind of jam the ball up there um, and then you can find out what's there by either like that might get it for you. It might be in a really good spot, but you might have to come up onto your forearms a little bit to get some weight in there. I might shift my hips now so they're not stacked. Um, and I'm kind of putting more weight into the front side of that adductor quad fascia. Um, and then same thing with straightening um, and bending or staying straight and rolling again. Like that's actually a really good spot on me. Um, you could kind of bend your knee and, and almost like suck the ball towards you a little bit um, and then straighten away, bend, straighten. I like that one. Really anything's um, gonna be good here if you feel like you've compressed a piece of fascia that's sore, tender, and then you're doing movement. Um, not everybody's gonna have an adhesion or a clunk in their adductor. Um, it can get stuck together more in a, like a linear way than a, in a knot or a ball here, but a lot of people do have adhesions in their um, VMO or low um, adductor quad fascia down here and then in that high fascia up by the pelvis. So I would check all the way up. Now, if your primary purpose for doing this is that one leg phenomenon of you know, being higher or uh, shorter, supposedly, um, then you want to actually check both for tenderness before you release. So um, you would maybe place the weight there and then place it here and you're just checking for tenderness, soreness, doing a tiny bit of movement um, that's more investigatory than the intention of releasing. And then you would switch legs and go to your, you know, so I'm on my left, I would go to my right. Um, and whichever side is a lot tighter is usually gonna be the culprit. Now, usually what you're gonna find is the adductor um, fascia on the side of the hip that appears higher when you're standing is usually gonna be the tight side. Um, but your body will tell you when you're on the right thing fascia-wise because unhealthy fascia is gonna hurt with compression. And there can be other factors that contribute to this whole um, one hip appearing higher than the other or one leg being longer than the other thing. Um, so it could be something other than your adductors. It's just that the adductors have been the number one thing that I've seen in my private practice. Maybe the IT bands would actually be um, an equal culprit um, with the adductors because inside outside right those tend to regulate stability um, either medial stability or lateral stability um, and those tend to contribute to that um, hip hike phenomenon now just a word real quick on leg length <laughs> um, unless you've had somebody actually you know x-ray your bones and measure left to right to you know accurately tell you that one bone is longer than the other um, or set of bones, uh, then more than likely you're in a soft tissue restriction pattern that's causing your pelvis to go out of alignment in one way or another, uh, and it's not actually a leg length issue. So I hope that makes sense. Um, give this a try. Let me know how it goes for you. And if you're also suffering from anything like low back pain or hip pain due to this hip discrepancy that we're talking about, then definitely search my YouTube channel right here, um, Mobility Mastery or mobilitymastery.com, the blog, because I have all kinds of techniques you can use for um, hip pain or bursitis or low back pain or SI pain. 
um, you name it. So if you use those search terms here, you'll find some um, really great techniques that are gonna solve the pain problem, which often is actually different than an anatomical or structural dysfunction. They don't always go together, um, but they can. So uh, give this a try. We'll put relevant links in the description below for you, so make it easy for you. And then of course, um, if you try this and you find something really interesting or have a success story, please share that below because I know everybody else loves to read the success stories. It inspires them to do the work themselves. And I love reading them because it inspires me to keep making these videos for you uh, each and every week. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. We have new videos going out every week and please join my email community or my Facebook group because I do coaching and tell stories and um, do stuff I just don't do anywhere else in both those places. Uh, you can do that by clicking the link below in the description as well. I'll see you next time. Bye.